Hi there. I'm here in the Arts Centre in Downpatrick, having a look around a fabulous exhibition. The exhibition is staged by the Top Floor Arts Studio Group, a group of amazing artists with wonderful art to show and wonderful stories to tell. It is fabulous because the people who are making it are pretty fabulous. They're very talented, a very talented group. And we seem to gel well and work well together and feed off each other's inspiration and skills. So we're all learning from each other. Can you tell me a little bit about this piece here, which we're standing beside, because it's yours. In this piece, um, I did a lot of stitching. Um, this one's You called... stitched that? Yes, yes. Wow. This is stitching. Well, I'm an embroiderer rather than a dyer, so this is my natural form. <laughs> and this was me going... So you there. stepped out of your comfort I zone? I did step out of my comfort zone. And which plants did you use to make the dyes? What we used was, uh, it was quite random. It was really interesting because we were approaching this towards autumn time, end of summer, autumn time. And we weren't sure what results we would get. And in this piece especially, um, there's a lot of you know bright yellows, which I, I didn't think we would get those colours at all. So this speaks to me, it's called seasonal, and it speaks to me of um, the plants and flowers that would be just on the turn um, from summer to autumn. Um, but I think they produced quite a summery effect. So uh, yes, there were all sorts of themes that came out of that for me about um, Seasons aren't what they used to be, are they, <laughs> with climate change? <laughs> Tell me, first of all, what was your inspiration for getting involved in this project? In the longer term, back in 2015, I had just finished a long-term career in education. I had always had aspirations to be an artist. Uh, my family decided somewhat differently. No money to be made through art. Uh, and this was an opportunity to really end up where I had wanted to be for some time. Uh, and uh, I've had a lovely time with Top Floor uh, Collective. Uh, we've done numerous exhibitions. This one really is outstanding. We have grown as artists, uh, the, the eight of us who are involved. And um, I just get a lot of pleasure out of working with the girls and working on my own. I want to talk just for a moment now about your pieces. And this is stunning. This is yours. Thank you. Where does it come from? Uh, I am, amongst other things, a swimmer. I swim all year round in the sea. Maybe I don't swim very well, but I do that uh, in the cold. And uh, obviously at this time of year, the, the sea warms up. So I'm very concerned about issues of pollution, uh, the environment. I also walk a lot. I'd spend a lot of time in nature. And that really was where this started. Uh, it's slightly out of my comfort zone insofar as there's uh, a number of knitted crocheted, uh, different techniques used in this, embroidery with wool. Every single bit of this actually has been reclaimed from someone or somewhere. Um, and uh, so it was a matter of assembling different pieces into a seascape, which to me signified the way the sea should be, rather than necessarily how the sea is today. That costume that you have made is stunning. The costume that you're wearing yep. is stunning. Thank you. Where did the idea come from to do it? Um, well, one of the artists that we chose was uh, Michael Sylvan Robinson, and he deals a lot with words and predominantly eyes and things like that. He's a, um, an activist, um, he's an American artist, but we were just taken by the colour of his work, the uh, variety of his work and the madness of his work to be honest. Um, so we decided that we would make a cape as one of the pieces. Um, but I made a headpiece for it as a wee surprise for everybody, they didn't know that was coming. And the cape in itself was a surprise because uh, I made this all at home um, along with JL, uh, one of my other uh, artists. 
It seems to me, looking at the piece, which, as you describe, is stunning colours, beautiful shape, gorgeous texture. But what I wondered was, are there some messages in there that need to be spelled out? There are lots of messages. Um, our idea was mainly um, how we grew up with our parents and our grandparents and the words of wisdom, really, that they have given us or whatever, and we carry them through our life and go forward and hopefully give them to our children. And, you know, so, but no matter where you go or how far you, you go, your parents and grandparents are always there with you. Why a mask that covers your face? Actually, um, Sylvan does have quite a few masks as his uh, collection, so I just thought it would be a lovely idea to do that. Masks are quite significant in art terms because they can be used to let us say things we wouldn't otherwise say. Mm. Is that what's going on here too? Possibly, possibly. Um, and yeah. they allow us to be people that we wouldn't normally yeah. be. I would say that's probably true, yeah. That's the, my student nursing uniform. Um, that I wore for three years while I was doing my nursing training um, and it was a it was a very different experience for me going going through nursing school because it was something I was very passionate about and something that I really wanted to do um, but I also had a whole other life before I went into nursing um, and that was something I thought got forgotten um, and part of that was that I had, you know, I was passionate about doing textile art. So I decided to combine the two and turn one of my nursing tunics into a piece that, you know, I could, I could really look at and I could remember. And um, a lot of the, the, the sayings that are on it are things that, um, you know, just flash through my mind during my, my training, you know, like my name is a nurse. I have a name and I, and I have a whole, life and I have interests and hobbies and kids and things and I actually find that um, being personable with my patients really helps us both <laughs> um, and so that's kind of like where that came from. If I had to ask you to talk about one other artwork that you did at the exhibition what would that be? I think it would probably have to be the C system which I feel like is not it didn't I feel like it didn't turn out the way that I really wanted it to. In my head, I had these grand visions for what it was going to be. Um, but in the end, I really kind of struggled to execute it as, you know, what was in my head um, to, to execute it fully. Um, but the meaning behind it is something I'm also very passionate about. Um, I enjoy swimming in the sea. I love nature. I love being out um, in nature. And one thing that really breaks my heart is the way that humans are changing the earth. Um, so I created the sea system out of recycled materials um, and, you know, bits of, of material that I had either found um, at the beach or bits of plastic, things like that, um, <clears throat> to kind of demonstrate that, like, that, that their world is changing too because of ours um, and that they, it, the ocean in general, um, Everybody thinks of it as being so wild and passionate, and it is, it does have a life of its own, and um, you have to be very careful when you're in it. Um, but even still, humans are directing the show <laughs> um, and directing what happens to it. And I just wish it weren't that way. I would love to see it be totally wild. <laughs> Part of our project um, was to be inspired by other artists and we wanted to pass our inspiration on so we were delighted when we were doing a project called Our Voices with Glebe House and we used what we learned to inspire them to help them create this wonderful banner which is um, sharing their messages um, and it was a great project and a great group of women and we really enjoyed it and we were delighted that they said they agreed to have their banner exhibited along with our work. Tell me first of all about 
the work you do, where does it come from? The hand embroidery. Yes. The hand embroidery has come from when I was a child. Uh -huh. um, my mum was very good at doing things like that. She used to do piecework after the war, you know, smucking children's dresses. So she always encouraged me to have a needle in my hand. I'm standing in awe of this piece that you were the lead artist uh, on. Tell me a little bit about that. This is um, about climate change and the coral reef and the damage that's being done to that by climate change. So you have the uh, pieces that are in white illustrate where the coral is dead. And then you have the colours. Coral reefs are very, very vibrant when they're living. And this is to illustrate the damage that's being done by climate change. You also have a kimono. Tell me a little bit about the kimono. The kimono uh, is one of the other artists that we followed. His name's Ichiku Kubota. And he spent a lifetime making these kimonos, pieces of art. But he was trying to investigate a very old method of working. Um, it's a shibori method, which uh, is a method of stitching before you dye the fabric. And then you dye it on top of the stitching. And when the stitching is released, you get a, a texture. This is a fabulous exhibition. And I'm going to ask you a slightly unfair question now, which is, do you have plans to take it elsewhere? We would love to take it elsewhere. We have nowhere in mind yet, but I think it deserves to go somewhere else. We have thoroughly enjoyed making it. and We've all worked well together and we've stretched ourselves because I'm a hand embroiderer and this is nothing like hand embroidery. So it took me right out of my comfort zone. Bridget, tell me first of all about that stunning piece of work beside you there. It's absolutely gorgeous. Tell me about it. Thank you. So my first idea was that I would do um, one wall hanging which would represent autumn and another that would represent spring. But in my the main part of my life, I would have been a special needs teacher and I would, would have worked with children who were out of school, usually for medical reasons, but for lots of other reasons. And I got really upset in the summer when I was reading some information about how many more children are out of school now since COVID. So it's actually doubled, at least in England and Wales. I'm not sure of the numbers in Northern Ireland, but I'm sure it's very similar. And it really upset me and I decided I would do a piece of work that was based on that information and my concerns about that rather than do a second piece <laughs> based on the seasons. So this piece of work is about my concerns and my complete distress about the fact that these children are now called ghost children. So now they have a name and a terminology. So these lost children are known by the government as ghost children. So here's one of my ghost children and here's another swimming around while all the other children are at school, which I think is awful that now we even have a terminology for them. So that's what this picture's about, because I, I couldn't do another landscape. I just felt like I wanted to do something that was about my, I'm really angry about it, and I want other people to be angry about it because it's not okay. As you've seen, this is a wonderful exhibition. And if you've got a spare minute any time between now and the end of August, do pop down to Downpatrick and have a look at this exhibition. Failing that, talk to your local gallery about getting it put on in your area.